Hi guys, how's it going? My name's Helena. Welcome back to the channel. Recently, I've had a really, really special opportunity of being able to experience photographing the Milky Way under Bortle One Skies with a really good friend of mine, Katie, from Alba Astrophotography on Instagram. Today, I'm going to take you through some of the tricks that I learned on that adventure for photographing the night sky in the hopes that it helps you capture better Milky Way images. Really, really quickly before we start, I'd just like to say that I've completely revamped my Patreon. About time, to be honest and I've added in some tier features. The tiers start from just £1 a month, which means that if you'd like to contribute to the channel and help me make more videos like this, you can do so over on Patreon. If this sounds like it'll interest you, head over, there's a link in the description and I really appreciate any support. The first thing we're going to talk about when planning a Milky Way photo shoot is location. Location, location, location. It is so important that you scout out the location that you're planning on imaging in during the daytime before it gets dark. This is for a number of reasons. One, it's easier to see the landscape. In a nice Milky Way photo, you're gonna want the Milky Way to feature, but also a nice feature in the foreground. You're gonna want to see this in the daytime to be sure of where you are. Secondly, and most importantly though, you need to know your surroundings and you need to have been there before so that you know where the potential risks are. A factor within location is Bortle. And if you're not familiar with the Bortle scale, it is a scale that measures the light pollution level you're in. Zero being absolutely no light pollution whatsoever in the middle of a blissful dark sky location and 10 being in the middle of say a city centre. The reason you're going to want to be as far away from local towns and light pollution is it drowns out your image. For instance, this is before I edited the light pollution out as best I could in this photograph of the Milky Way that I took, but you can see that at the corners, the glow of the light pollution is starting to creep in and it completely takes out all of that lovely dust and detail in the Milky Way. The second part of planning to go out and take a Milky Way photograph is, well, planning. Plan in the shot that you want before you actually go out to take it. An app that I love to use for this that Katie introduced to me on this Milky Way trip that I'm talking about today is Photopills. I'm gonna make another video in the future breaking down all of the features of Photopills, but to be honest, I'm not educated enough right now to teach it. But one of my favorite features that Katie showed me during our night of Milky Way photography was the night AR feature. Now, looking at this now, you'll probably think that it looks very similar to like Skyview and other night sky apps that I've shown on the channel to locate deep sky objects. But in this case, it only shows the Milky Way and the position of the Milky Way relative to where you are. This makes it so much easier to plan your shots as it shows the time that the Milky Way is in certain positions. And if you, for instance, have a landscape with the gap that you want the Milky Way to come over and fill, you can use photopills to ensure that where you are is the right location to get this composition so you're not disappointed on the night. Another really neat feature in photopills is being able to put in your exact camera settings to plan your composition even further. You can put everything into this right down to the exact model of the camera that you're using as it will use the sensor size from this, the focal length of the lens that you're using, your focus distance, whether you want the image to be landscape or portrait and your aperture. This is so important as it literally allows you to see an aerial view of where you're photographing, what you're photographing, and how much of the Milky Way you can see. It is the next best to actually being there at the location. I'm gonna take you through the planning feature of Photopills now. So if we click on the planner, it does look a bit daunting to start with, but don't worry, it's all really new to me and we're gonna learn it step by step. So to find your location and to get an aerial view of your location, you're gonna come down to load, the arrow at the bottom. And if you, if your location has a specific name, you can type it in here or address, but Katie and I's was quite off the beaten track. So I'm just gonna type in the postcode. Should come up and it's taken me to here. So when I got this on the night on the app, I was very confused because I was looking down at this barn and I was like, that is not Cruggleton Church. But don't worry, it should be relatively nearby if you type in the postcode. So we're just gonna zoom out as if you're on Google Maps. And as you can see, 
Cruggleton Church is directly below it. To specifically go to that location, you press and hold the little red tag, imagine that's you, and then place it over your location. So for instance, mine's Cruggleton Church. Now, at the bottom here, you can see the time. It's four minutes past midnight and it's on the 2nd of July, 2022. And you might think, where's the Milky Way? Well, the white dots that are spanning over Cruggleton Church in an arch, that represents the Milky Way. And the bigger dots towards the bottom represent the galactic center. So the Milky Way core that houses the Lagoon Nebula, the Omega Nebula and the Eagle Nebula. You can move along this slider at the bottom like so to see the path that the Milky Way takes during the night to plan where you're going to best benefit from shooting. As you can see in Scotland we don't get a lot of darkness here at all. In summer we're in a constant state of twilight which is a bit of a pain. But say, for instance, we were shooting at just after midnight, so 20 past midnight, you can see that the Milky Way arches right over the church, or even at quarter to 11 even, imagining we're in darkness. You can see that it arches right over the church, and on the right-hand side, you can see that I'm going to be getting a little bit of the galactic core, which is very exciting. This is pretty much dead on the photograph that I got the last time I was there. On the right hand side you can see the galactic core starting to peek through and in the middle you can see the Cygnus region. The next big thing to talk about is of course equipment and the equipment that you're going to use. Now it's a common misconception that you have to have a tracker to photograph the Milky Way and you absolutely do not. In this photograph, yes, I did use a tracker and it allowed me to take longer exposures and gain more detail in the Milky Way but it is absolutely not necessary for starting out. I'm going to list the ideal Milky Way setup for complete beginners that I think is going to get you off on the right foot. If you do not have a tracker, we're going to eliminate that for the moment. As for cameras, the Canon 60D is a really popular and really affordable camera second hand now for astrophotography. Now modifying your camera to allow more hydrogen alpha onto the sensor would be really good in this case to get more detail in areas such as the Cygnus region. It is not necessary, however if you're already buying the camera second hand on websites like Astro UK Buy and Sell, you can 9 times out of 10 find one modified for the same price. And if you've got a camera that's already modified, you're winning. Next is the lens. Now, you're going to get a different view of the Milky Way depending on which lens and which focal length on that lens that you use. However, seeing as we've eliminated the tracker element, you're going to want to stick to the wider focal lengths in order to avoid star trailing. The main focal length that I've used to photograph the Milky Way so far is 24 millimeters, but the Rokinon and or Samyang, depending on where you are, 14mm lens is an absolutely excellent contender for beginner Milky Way astrophotography. Used on MPB, the prices are absolutely amazing. It does have considerable distortion and coma in the corners and quite a strong vignette, but these can all be reduced in Photoshop. Next, a sturdy tripod is so important to avoid camera shake and even better if you get one that has a hook on the bottom that you can weigh down with a bag or some sort of weight. This will also avoid any unwanted shake to the camera. The third and final piece that you're going to want to use to control the exposures that you're taking is an intervalometer. An intervalometer is basically an external remote for your camera, so instead of having to continuously press the shutter button every time you want to take a photo, think of this as your shutter button and you can take it externally and avoid any extra camera shake. The last thing I want to cover for Milky Way astrophotography is exposure time and for this I'm going to assume that you don't have a star tracker. Exposure time can also be thought of how long the shutter in the camera is open for in order to capture all of the light from the Milky Way and it is an essential part of your settings when you're not tracking the night sky with something like the Skywatcher Star Adventure as you need to make sure that your stars are not trailing. To do this you can use a really simple maths technique, don't worry it's not complicated, I freaked out too, and it's called the 500 rule and you basically take the magical number of 500 and divide it by your focal length of the lens that you're using. So if I was using a 24 millimeter lens, I would do 500 divided by 24 and get the exposure time that I could use without stars trailing. 
The magical number of 500 only works for full frame cameras, so if you're using a crop sensor camera, use 300, and if you're using a micro four thirds camera, use 250. The number that you get at the end of this calculation is the amount of time you can leave your shutter open before the stars start to trail in your photo, and you're going to want to set this number as your exposure time in your intervalometer and take as many of them as you can. Now, some of you might be thinking, why am I gonna be taking multiple photos? Well, the idea in astrophotography is that you don't just take one photo, you take a range of photos of the same thing and then stack them to create a final image. And this, to put it simply, just improves the signal to noise ratio. So it reduces the noise and increases the amount of detail in your image. That leaves you on a little bit of a cliffhanger there. If you are interested and you'd like to find out more about Milky Way photography and you found it helpful, let me know down in the comments below and I'd be happy to do a part two. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm showing you guys what I'm learning along the way, along my journey on learning how to photograph the Milky Way. I am by no means a professional at it, but I want to show you guys what I'm learning as I'm doing it to hopefully inspire you to get under the night sky yourself. As always guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another video and I hope you're getting clear skies where you are whenever you can.